So even if we already know how to tell the time, we might just have to go back to school for this one. What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here, back at it again. And there are two terms that we recklessly use when describing a watch, and they are great bang for buck and innovative. But when a watch comes along that is actually a great value and innovative, it excites us and is worth our time. So let me show you what I mean with 7 Fridays V-Series. And besides, it should be arriving anytime. <laughs> And here is 7 Fridays V101, part of their V-Series, <laughs> and this watch is pure eye candy. But let's start with the obvious. How do we tell the time on this watch? Because it can look intimidating, but it's really simple, and let's see why. So we only really need to pay attention to this quadrant right here, where it says 0 to 4, and on the disc where it says plus 0, plus 8, and plus 4. The, the plus 4 is concealed at the moment behind the uh, 7 Friday logo here, but it'll, we'll show that in a minute. So what time is it right now? Well, it's 1.07 PM. And how do I know that? Because on the disc where it says plus zero and then the one, so there's nothing to add to it. So it's one and the minutes is the traditional way of telling the time. And we know it's PM because of this day night indicator right there. And I wondered why wouldn't they just use a moon phase because it's the same thing. But I get it because this is going for the industrial look. So a moon phase indicator might have looked out of place. So I'm fine with the way they utilize a day night indicator here. So let's, let's do another time check. So what time is it right now? Well, it's 9.06 a.m. on the disc. Plus 8 and 1, so that's 9. And then 9.06 right here on the minutes. And we know that is uh, a.m. because the day-night indicator changed from blue to white. So let's just do one more time check here. And what time is it right now? Well, it's 5.05 plus 4 and the one, and then the traditional minutes right there. So it's 5.05. So we just saw how simple it is uh, to tell the time. And the second hands also works very similarly right there. It works, it operates on the plus zero zero, plus 20, and plus 40 to tell the time. And one of the cool, another cool factor here is that we see part of the exposed movement here where we see uh, part of the balance wheel and escapement there doing its thing. Really cool, and I think just the right amount of, of exposure to give it that really special and that really cool factor right there. And this dial is so stunning, and it's also aided by four layers of depth, really giving it a lot of attention to detail in addition to those applied indices. This is a really stunning looking watch. It's a really, really gorgeous watch here with, you know, this the layers, the multi-layers on the, on the dial there really lends itself perfectly with this watch. So I know our biggest concern might have been how intimidating it is to tell the time, but we just saw how really simple it is. So it shouldn't be intimidating at all and we should be able to enjoy this really cool and innovating watch. And if we turn the watch over, we get a very informative and fun case back with seemingly all the information about this watch right back here, including a map. Uh, it says automatic right there, design and concept, headquartered in Switzerland. And then it has an arrow pointing to Switzerland on the map. Engine from Japan with another arrow pointing to the map. And that's because they use the Miyota A2S7, which is a skeletonized movement with 42 hours of power reserve. This is a lot of fun information on the back of this case back, making it one of the most unique and consistent uh, quirky designs being consistent with the rest of the design of this watch. And if we turn the watch to its side, we will see here two arrows pointing uh, to these two slots right here, which indicates to us where to change the strap, which is what they call a fast changing strap system. And all we need to do is insert something in, into these holes right there and the, and the straps pop out easily and they go back in just as easily. And what is also really cool is that even though these two arrows 
are for us to indicate where we change the straps, they've actually nicely integrated them into the rest of the design of the watch. Uh, this is quite clever and really well thought out. There is an incredible amount of attention to detail when it comes to the finishing of this watch. We have the polished finish and then we have the brushed finish. And then on the side right here where the lugs would be, we have a frosted type of look. So that those three different types of finishes actually uh, come together really nicely in this combination. So now let's take a look at this strap because this silicone strap in turquoise has to be one of the funnest and coolest and actually useful straps that I have come across. Here you can see it, you can see it, it has the inches on there and where you can actually measure your wrist size. Uh, right, right here where it says your wrist size indicator in inches and on the back it's also the same but done in centimeters. And then of course it has the 7 Friday branding throughout here. So let's see what size wrist I have according to this uh, strap. Hold on. So this is probably where I would wear, wear the watch. And according to this, it indicates that I have a 6 and a 3 quarters inch wrist. Pretty cool, very very useful as well. And now let's get to the size here. It, it's not overly thick here as you can tell, at least at least not to me. Let me, let me take the watch off. So this watch is 44 millimeters and it's basically lugless here as you can see here. So what that means, it, it's actually suitable for any size wrist because no part of the watch or the lugs will not jet past the wrist bone. And so in a watch of this size, uh, it's really personal preference that you like a bolder size watch. But if it had lugs and the lugs were jetting past the wrist bone, that's where I think we lose the right to call it preference and where it's just really flat out inappropriate for uh, for that size wrist if you have the lugs jetting past the wrist bone. In this case, it's really personal preference. It is a bold watch that takes up a lot of real estate on the wrist, but it doesn't go past the wrist. It just goes up towards the arm. So just who are these guys behind 7 Friday? Well, this was a company that started in 2012 and has very quickly become one of the more popular and successful micro brands out there. They have a really big presence in the watch community and they have what's called a hashtag live 7 Friday, which I think is Olympic Games type of competition for the live uh, for the Seven Friday uh, community and Seven Friday owners, it sounds like a it sounds like a really fun event. They have their own boutiques as well as being sold in other prestigious boutiques as well. And because they have become so popular, well, that brings the bad guys out, the ones that create fakes. And how has Seven Friday uh, countered the fake or the counterfeit market? Well. They've equipped these watches with an NFC chip, which means you can register your watch with, with the 7 Friday app and it will authenticate the watch immediately for you. And you, therefore, if you'll know right away if your watch is real or what is fake. But that chip also serves other purposes as well. I, I've read that they, are, they will one day use that for servicing notifications as well and notifying 7 Friday owners of certain community events. So... Uh, that's actually a pretty cool and useful chip. It seems like there isn't anything that 7 Friday hasn't thought of that is actually more than just cosmetic. They are actually very useful. This is in the silver and blue dial, but it also comes in a copper and gray dial, as well as a black PVD with a gray and red dial. And the cost of this watch retail is 1200 USD. And for that amount, this is not an impulse purchase. And what I mean by that is, if you've already been eyeing this watch and are maybe on the fence, then I would say sure to buy this watch because it is definitely worth owning. However, if this is the first time you're seeing this watch and you like what you see, well, I would still encourage you to visit 7 Friday's website for more information because for most of us, this is a pretty significant purchase. If there is one gripe about this watch for not going the full nine yards, I would have to point to the crystal because this is not a sapphire crystal. This is a hardened mineral crystal. So let's talk about the three different types of crystals. The first one is the least expensive plastic crystal or plexiglass or hesolite, whatever we want to call it. It's the same thing. It's plastic. It was the kind that was used on the first Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch. And they also scratch easily, but they can also be 
repaired pretty easily as long as the scratch on the dial doesn't trap our fingernail as we rub it across it. But if we want to replace a Hesslite crystal, the general cost is about $250 installed. And unless we have experience, I would not recommend buying a crystal from eBay and then trying to install it ourselves. I've seen too many horrific uh, exa bad examples down the road from people who have tried it without much experience. And then there is a mineral crystal, which is about $300. But since this is a hardened mineral crystal, it might cost a little more, but it's also a better crystal. And then there is the sapphire crystal, the hardest crystal. On a 10 scale, it is a 9, with diamonds being a 10, to help put that into perspective. So it basically takes a diamond to scratch a sapphire crystal. And I've never had any damage done to any of my sapphire crystals. However, this hardened mineral crystal should do the trick just fine from our daily wear and tear. Uh, and unless we are roughhousing it with Hulk Hogan and get body slammed by Hulk Hogan, this crystal should should survive just fine over time. And at least we have an idea of the cost of replacement crystals. So, let's take a pop quiz. What time is it right now? It is 5 16 p.m. because 4 plus 1 and in the minutes at 16 and then the day night indicator indicating p.m. Okay, we just saw the watch up close and I also had a chance to review the footage and I can say that the watch looks exactly the same in person as it does in front of a camera and that's not always the case. A lot of times we can make anything look good with lighting and slick camera angles but we don't do that around here. There's no tomfoolery around here. And you know, this watch sort of reminds me of receiving a new favorite Christmas present, even though we just opened what we thought was our favorite Christmas present. And going back to my childhood days, I think that might have been the remote controlled race car, or <laughs> actually the kind that we would have to rev up manually back and forth before finally letting it go and watching it take off. Uh, those are good times. This is sort of like receiving our new favorite Christmas present from our favorite uncle who has always been known for giving us great presents and so we look forward to opening his presents. And this time when I opened up that crate revealing the watch, I felt joy because I already had high elevations. Because I already had high expectations because Seven Friday watches are always well received and in images they look great. And this time they surpassed my expectations bringing back fond memories from back in the day on Christmas morning. Seven Friday as a brand is doing everything great. There are two main principles that every brand has to have. One is an exceptional product and a presence in the watch community and Seven Friday has both. But as great as they are doing, I'm sure they face some challenges and the one challenge that comes to mind is that $1,200 price point because I'm sure there are some of us who will chirp that for $1,000 or for $1,200, we have a lot of other options. Swiss brands with 50 years of history. But do we really? As we start to evaluate everything that the V-Series has to offer, those options start to diminish. Aside from its unique time telling, this watch is well executed. From its case design to its attention to details to its complicated yet stunning dial. This is a lot of watch and it offers a great alternative for those of us who are looking for a less than traditional time telling watch. Earlier I touched on the popularity of 7 Friday and they sort of remind me of two other non-traditional time telling watches, U Work and Height, along with the industrial element of Lindy Wertling watches. And I like all three of those brands, but all three of those brands also makes super expensive watches. And this is where 7 Friday has carved out a really nice niche because they also make unique timepieces at much more affordable prices and it's working for them. So for example, if we look at the Instagram of Lindy Wertling, they have 180,000 followers versus 7 Friday's 258,000 followers. And Lindy Wertling has been around since 1995, so they've had a 17 year head start of 7 Friday. And I know the social media numbers are neither here nor there when it comes to the quality of the watches. But in this case, it goes to show the support of 7 Friday because their watches are actually well received versus being popular for the wrong reasons, such as through a scandal or making crappy watches. 
So for all the reasons I've already covered, including any concerns, 7 Fridays V-Series is an easy recommend. It is one of those rare and exciting watches that goes beyond its looks because it is well made. It is a watch that deserves to make it into our collection, especially if we have the more traditional time-telling watches, as we would look forward to wearing the most unique watch in our collection. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you the next time. Seven Friday reminds me of some of the more expensive watches, such as Lindy. So wearing Seven Friday watches is like feeling like it's seven o'clock every Friday. So buying a watch over 121 bottles of whiskey and 200 beers, they might be onto something. So 7 Friday. Yep, 7 Friday. <laughs>